Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this episode, we're going to look at the products tab inside of the funnel editor page. And specifically here, we're going to look at using the product limiter element in the product itself. So if you're looking for how to set up your products with your payment gateways, uh, that is under the account settings, under payment gateways, you'll find all that training there. So let's just click on products. And I got most of this all set up ahead of time just to make the uh, training go a little bit quicker. And I have three different products set up. So let's just click on edit. So if you went through the training on the payment gateways, it's gonna be very familiar to you. We put in our product name, we're gonna select Stripe as our billing integration, $47 for our amount. In this case here, we're not gonna put in any price display override. And we're gonna click on one-time product. Now down here at the bottom, when yours is open, it'll, be, it'll say disabled, so we're gonna enable this. We're gonna say we have a total of 10 products to sell and one is our pre-sold quantity and then you update your product. Now I did the exact same thing with this product too, except in this case I put in 10 of 10 for our quantity limiter. And now let's take a look at the order bump. The only difference inside of the order bump is that right down here at the bottom, we put in, should this product be a bump on the order page? And we click yes, otherwise we did everything else the same. And we did five and 10 on our quantities, just so that we had something to begin our test with. So now let's take a look at what this page looks like. Again, we're gonna be using, in this case here, we're gonna be using a regular two-step order form, not the two-step order form with the inventory. And how you put in the two-step order form is you just create yourself a new element. And we're going to click on two-step order form. It'll pop it in down below here. And then we're going to make a few changes on it. One of the things we want to do is we want to have it so that the phone number does not have to be required on the page. And that's uh, really about it. Let me see here. Mm, yeah, that's pretty much all we're going to do on this form. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of other editing you can do, but that's not for this video. This is just purely talking about the product. So let's click on save. But before we do that, let's come in and let's take this out because I'm afraid if there's two order forms on the page, we're going to have an issue. So let's just click that again. And then let's click on preview. And we'll put in contact information, country, and go to step two. Now what you're gonna see happen here is test product number one, $47 is showing, but test product two, even though we did not tell this to use the product limiter version of the two-step order form, it still shows as sold out. So that's kind of a cool thing to have. And then of course we have down here with our order bump. The problem is with the order bump is although this had a product limiter on it, it doesn't show a product limiter and I've tested it where I've had the, um, when I had all the inventory completely sold out and it doesn't say anything. So don't use the product limiter for the testing or for um, the, the order bump. So let's uh, back out of this. And again, if we look at our products for this step, we had our test product one had one of 10 sold, two had 10 of 10, so it was completely sold out, and our order bump was five of 10. So if we go back to the page, you're gonna see here that test product one is okay to sell, two is sold out, and three, like I said, the order bump is not working properly. So now if we go into the two-step inventory, or two-step with inventory, should be the way I should have typed it out, and we look at our products. I think I have four products in this one just to show something a little bit different. So I have four products here, and number one is nine of 10 sold, for two is 10 of 10, 20, and 10 of 20. So here on our product two, this one should be sold out as well, and I created these exactly the same as I did in the first time. So now let's go into our page editor. And here, let's do the same thing. Let's just create a new element. And instead of going to the two-step order form, we want to go to the two-step order form with inventory, and we will create that element. And let's scroll down, and we'll go into edit it. 
And again, you can edit all the stuff in here you would like. This is not about that. We're going to remove our phone number just because I don't want to put it in. But now here you have the choice of your inventory label. You can say only X number are left, X are sold, or X of X are sold. And I found that the X sold, that really doesn't make any sense because you could say that 20 are sold, but nobody, it doesn't create any scarcity because who knows how many you have. You could have 10 million of them. But um, if you're saying only five are left or five of 20 are sold or 10 or 15 of 20 are sold, then that creates some scarcity. So let's say we wanted to go only X number left and then we would just save it and all that. But let's just uh, delete this out. So again, we don't run into any issues and we'll click on save and then we will click on preview. And again, we'll get past this page and go to step two. So here we had our first product, nine of 10 sold. And then three was 20 of 110 sold. But again, here it's nice, so it's crossed out, but it gives you this below it, where on the other one without the inventory, it tells you it's sold out, but it doesn't give you that other little bit of FOMO-inducing text below it there. And again, you got the same issue with the order bump not showing the inventory on there, so you don't want to use that on the order bump. And so now the third way of getting this set up with using inventory is just to go and use a regular order form without the two steps on it. And there's no need to go look at the products. I set them up exactly the same as uh, the two step. So here we have pretty much the bare minimum you need on the page. Actually, you don't even really need this top one. If you only have one product, you don't need this thing at the top, even though it does tell you that there's only X number left. So I guess in this case here, you really would want it on this page. You have an email address. You have to have that. You don't have to have name, phone number, anything else. Credit card. You want to have the order summary so they know what they're buying. And of course, you don't have to have the order bump, but you do need a button that is set to submit the page. So let's save this and then preview the page. But before we do that, real quickly, I forgot to mention what this element is right here. What this element is, is the order select with inventory. So we can click on that and put it in. So you have the order select with inventory. But we can also have an order select on the page. Let me just pop that in there and let's see what we get when we put that in as well. And let's just take out one of these. We don't need all of them. Let's click on that. Now we'll click on save and then on preview. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, so because we have our inventory, we have the the spinners here, and then that worked just fine. This is 10 of 10, and this one's sold out. But if you use the regular inventory, you use the regular product select, I should say, you're not going to have that. So we don't want that second product select on the page. That's what I thought, so let's just take that out. I was just wondering if it would show up just like it did in the two-step order form without the inventory and have it crossed off but not show the, um, the quantity limiter underneath it. So there you go. That looks really nice. It lets you know that that one is sold out out. So there you go. There's uh, three, four, five different ways that we just looked at on how to set up the product limiter on any one of your products inside of ClickFunnels. So if you have any questions on that, reach out to ClickFunnels support. And until next time, have a great day.